accountants, bookkeepers, and business owners. And we have a special program for everyone today. We're going to have Doug Sleater presenting at the Cloud Summit at Paradise Point in San Diego. And he is going to screen share while he gives his presentation on something having to do with the cloud and moving to the cloud and moving your clients to the cloud. And there he is. So I'm going to keep his screen, his thumbnail selected so we can all see it. That's Paradise Cove right there in his picture. And we should be getting started in about two to three to four or five minutes. We send him questions. Uh, you know what? Post them in the chat. Who knows? Maybe he'll be able to check them. Okay. Good morning, Adrian. How are you? I'm good. How are you? I'm ready for a nap, to be quite honest. Oh. <laughs> I'm always ready for a nap. <laughs> good morning, Tim. Good morning. Tim, we've got Doug broadcasting live from the Cloud Summit. Oh, awesome. So basically, today's hour is going to be his presentation. Oh, we get to, he does the heavy lifting, huh? <laughs> yeah. So, Seth, just give me a hint. Uh, thumbs up. I'm, I'm looking at your screen, at your video. Just say thumbs up is all, if all is good. Yeah, okay. they look perfect. So Doug has us muted, so don't worry about talking. You're not going to distract him. Um, <laughs> Can anything distract him? <laughs> but, of course, our talking will come out in our recording, so... Gotcha. No, you should just use a chat. Dennis, did you go to the VCon? Have you been doing that the past couple days? No, I didn't want to pay the money. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> Hey Adrian, if you'll notice, my wall kind of looks like your wall. Yeah, no pictures. <laughs> Only mine's white. Yours is kind of a, a uh, I'm not sure. A creamy off white. Yeah. There you go. <laughs> wall kind of glows. It's like it's always like he's it's like he's in the clouds. Mm. Adrian is angelic. <laughs> <laughs> there you go, angelic. Uh, okay, so why are you not on your normal background? I'm on my laptop, and why I'm not in my normal background will be announced at the end of Doug's little deal. Okay. So it's a full well, show today. <laughs> <laughs> That's right, and we'll see if Hartley joins us. I have a feeling he probably forgot. Hartley? No. <laughs> What, you think he's going to join? I, I don't know that he forgot. He might have got busy. I think he might be a little shy. We need to encourage him. Well, he seemed very willing to do it when I originally chatted with him about it. Well, the only bit of news that I've got is... Um, uh, on Saturday, we're having a wall knock down in the office. So, you're having a yeah. what? A wall knocked down in the office. Oh, wow. You're expanding. Congratulations. We are. Yeah, we are moving. We are expanding into the next door office. So we, we add uh, a bit more space. That's, That's outstanding. Nice. For offices, servers, both? Oh, actually, Harley says he's here. He's sitting up his bit mic. Of both. Mm -hmm. Bit of both. Very cool. Congratulations. Yay, Harley. Is this the first for Hartley? First on Abo, I think. First, I will have seen him on Abo. Hey, hey Seth. Yeah. Seth. Yeah. Just put your thing, your thumb up if you hear me. We can hear you. Okay, so they're going to start late and maybe go over. So I wouldn't go live unless you already are. No, we already are. I'll just unmute you for a minute. I can hear you now. Okay, yeah, we already are live right now. So it's okay. Yeah. Whatever you know, we do, we got to do it. Nine o'clock, we'll kind of cut out and <laughs> let Bruce do his thing. And then I, I had completely forgotten Hartley was going to come on and do wave accounting. He's setting up his mic now. So we may just have Hartley come back. I mean, of course, I'm hoping he'll join us this week, too, but come back next week to do wave accounting. Yeah. Well, they're going to take about 5 or 10 before I get up there, too, so I might not be up until quarter after. 
So, whatever. Okay, so then, you know what, Bruce, why don't you do your thing now while we're waiting for that? Yeah, okay. that's a good idea. Just wait until okay. you see my slides change, and then you'll know I'm here. Mm -hmm. Okay, I probably lost signal because I unplugged. You're still there. Yep. We still got you. Okay, just checking. There's the pig. There's the pig. There's a reason for the pig. In every big business, the idea behind your business is to grow. LNR tax preparation is growing. We have grown exponentially. Did I say that right? Probably not. Yes. I'm so damn tired. <laughs> <laughs> we have grown a lot. Uh, the end of tax season, October 15th, was huge. I was so overbooked, I ended up getting a partner. I was so busy. So now I'm trying Whoa. to figure out where I'm standing. That noise in the background is traffic. I'm standing in the road. <laughs> oh dear. We hear Don't wind. Sounds like San Hurricane Sandy. If you can, can you see me? I'm yep. standing yes. outside in the road. You're right, you're good. Okay, I'm fixing to share the office at my home. Okay. It's tiny. That's the office at my home. I'm no longer at my home office. Bruce has a real office. Drum roll, please. Ooh, congratulations. Let's see. I'm trying to. I may not do the camera right. I may have to hold it funny. And of course, the sun is not helping me. So I can't see a thing. Okay, I can see the floor. <laughs> well, let me find my mouse. Oh, crumb. There you go. There you go. Is the whole thing there? Thank you for the yes. drum roll. Well done. Yep. Yeah, well done. Closer so we can see the uh, insignias on the glass. It's a little blurry. So, yeah. so for those of you who don't know, that great big logo in the top, I'm sure you can see that. Yeah. It matches mm -hmm. your... Tim logo. Brand of Brand Graphics designed that. I had it exploded to 30 by 30. Yikes. Whoa. So that's huge. Congratulations. So if I, if I can, I'm going to nice. try and give you a little bit of a tour. No smoking, please. <laughs> it's got a bell. Oh, oh, my goodness. This is where everybody will be waiting for me if they come in here and we are busy. And this is my receptionist little hole. Wow. Please forgive us as we are still putting things together. Um, for those of you who didn't see the before pictures, it looked like a crayon box threw up in here. <laughs> we, we, we've painted and done quite a bit of things. This is our reception office, where our receptionist, who is not here today, is going to be. Here's a little bitty file room. And oddly enough, most of this stuff was in that little room I showed you there at the beginning. Here's my partner's little hole in the wall. She's got some pictures ready to hang. A little bitty break room right there. Wow. A ginormous conference table that's being used as a dining room table right now. <laughs> and then my office. Wow. Here's my 125 tank. gallon tank. Who goes in there? <laughs> uh, many, many who's. <laughs> many, many who's. Wow. But I have a real office, a real storefront. That's awesome. Congratulations, Bruce. Ooh. Congratulations, Bruce. Thank you. Thank you. Looks nice. Hey, hey Bruce, what drove this? This is big changes. That's big cool. Time. Well, like like I said at the beginning, the... Uh... <laughs> <laughs> I love Turn it. Turn the camera around here. The idea behind any business is to grow, and I've been trying to get into an office for two years, but uh, 2009 kind of killed everything, so... And then the next year, my wife lost her job, so finances just weren't there. And then when things were kind of bad this year until October, and it, just the money just appeared. Wow. So I went ahead and did the jump. A little late filers. Wow. Yeah, yeah. That, that many late filers. It was wow. an, it was <laughs> ironic. I've never had that many late people come to me. Were they all ever. on the I assume. That's awesome. a big expense. Yeah. How close is it to your house? 2.8 miles. Oh, yeah. nice. So when the weather is nice, I can walk or ride my bike. Wow. Hey, Seth, can I borrow your bike? Yeah. 
<laughs> I'll ship it out to you. <laughs> no, Bruce has to come get it and write it back. <laughs> yeah. That's right. And you know what? I'll actually, here's what we do. We'll buy you a bike, okay? Because then what we'll do is I'll ride, you'll come out here, I'll ride back with you with my laptop broadcasting live on Google+. Plus. There we go. Ride back to Missouri. <laughs> From Burbank. Right. <laughs> Uh, you'll get fit and exercise doing that. Road trip, road like trip. Our little Forrest Gump kind of deal. <laughs> <laughs> oh, hang on. Seth, if you're serious, we should plan that for the spring. <laughs> All right. Let's do it. You might want to do a Google map and see how long it'll take on bike. Let's see. It's... Nancy, uh, we got a full house this morning. That means Hartley can't come in. Hartley can't come in, and neither can Nancy or Ted. Sorry, guys. Snooze you lose. Serve. Rhonda, how are you? Uh, good, if I take my mute off. There were too many people here. Gotcha. I'm great. I'm great. How's your great. son? Good. My son is doing well, back at school. Yeah. Uh, still dealing with his asthma, but... Overall, as long as he stays calm, we're, we're okay. All right, cool. Awesome. I so, love our rain that we got. <laughs> yeah, I was, I, I, I was driving back from San Diego in that last night. Yeah. It was Hi, pretty... Roxy. Hey. You? Guys, <laughs> you know, I can log out and go on to the YouTube channel if we need to let Hartley in or... Probably not necessary. It's all basically, we're all going to be sitting here watching Chuck. We see him today. We oh. see him at other conferences. Back, and how like do we really bring them all together? Intro. And that's the thing I've been working on. Actually, that's Robert's so couple of individuals, and I want to point out to the. Well, I'm gonna go get my battery cord real quick. Already, and one of them you might not know, but I did a lot of planning with these individuals and came up with a solution that you can take to your business um, and share that with. Actually, we built this at 7 o'clock this morning to three practices that are in the room. And they were really amazed at what they saw. So before we unveil this, I don't have a lot of time to answer the questions. I'm not going to take any questions. But at 9 o'clock, the exhibit hall is going to be open. And, these products are be in there. and at 10 o'clock, it's sunset by these products are going to be featured, and then that's when we will answer questions, okay, such as pricing, how does this work, those type of things. So um, at this time, I'm going to ask uh, Scott West and Chris McKay to come up. By the way, for, for those of us and, uh, on Twitter, there's a hashtag. I'm not going to be able to see it up front. Like well, I'll put it in the chat. In hand. And what this device is, <laughs> is a device that you can give to your clients. It's a private not echoing, device, am I? Uh, with your interface, with your calendar firm, with the different applications running on it. Also, if you look at the front, don't they make a great banner light? <laughs> <laughs> There's your logo. Yeah. <laughs> right. So you can definitely see uh, it's privately label labeled uh, solution. <laughs> so, oh, yes. So what I'm going to do is start unveiling some of the um, items. So the name of the company is called Revonew, and that's R-E-V-O-N-E-W. If you go to that website, you can find information out even today. Um, and then the next item, what is Revenue? So Revenue is three powerful cloud services as of today. We expect the next four to six weeks, there's other powerful solutions that are going to be a part of this. And those solutions um, we'll talk about here in a second. It's in one easy interface to access all these different applications, which we'll put the interface up on the screen in a second. Um, it's a computer optimized for the cloud, so it'll work perfectly well in the cloud. It's extremely fast. I'm not going to get in the specs of the computer and all that. Um, so you get three great products all in one. Keep in mind it's the word three right now, but we expect that, we expect that to expand to 10 and 12 here in the next uh, four to six weeks. So the three products that you receive right now is the Cloud9, which you guys are aware of, the CloudSway, which is financial collaboration, and Nikea. Nikea is a new product in the accounting industry, but what it does is it handles website, your website management, 
social media, email marketing, those type of things to communicate with your clients, newsletters and those, those things. Um, so revenue has an interface where all these three products will actually live. And then also, you have a laptop device that's privately labeled that uh, Chris and Scott just um, demonstrated. And then the next item is the, the, the label. So this is what the interface looks like um, when, that, when that client clicks on the icon. On the right-hand side, you have the interactive website. You have the business center, which is Cloud9. Uh, the interactive website is your website. Uh, financial tools, that's the collaboration of Cloudsway, and right below that is you can launch a browser. And as you can see right below that, you have your social media. So we're going to help you and assist you within social media. And then right below that, you have your company's information. So when your clients log in and access this, this is what they're going to see. Okay? This is all beta. This is not a Cloud9 product. This is a Revo new product. So <coughs> Revenue will explain how this works. Um, it will integrate with our our platform. But if you see what you if you like what you see here, you want to go through Revenue to purchase this product because this product is the one that manages the different interfaces that are going to um, handle the business center applications and so forth. Um, and I believe that is it. Yep. So at this time, I'm going to turn it back over to Chris. He's going to bring, uh, introduce uh, Doug, and we'll see you at 9 o'clock and 10 o'clock, and thank you for your time. Okay, just a couple of more notes, and then we're going to bring up our speaker for the morning. Uh, first of all, how many of you tweeted yesterday? How many of you won something from tweeting yesterday? You may win money. You won 20 bucks. You won 20 bucks. How many tweets did you send, sir? Five. Four dollars a tweet. Not bad. It beats a sharp stick in the eye, right? What's twenty bucks? How much did you win? Twenty dollars. How many tweets did you send? Two. Ten dollars per tweet. So not bad. And then somebody won an iPad, right? A mini iPad. Where is she? Who won the mini iPad? She's off. She's off trying to figure out how to start it up, right? <laughs> anyway, we've got um, some great stuff available. We're, we're doing the same thing. Questions today. You're going to be getting. We'd love to see your feedback up on the. Uh, up on the screen because we keep it rolling as the speakers are speaking. But the big one that we're doing today, and we still have two mini iPads to give away, is what's in the box? That's the question. What's in the box? Which um, reminds me of that movie Seven. I hope that's not what's in the box. But a um, little small for that. Um, you can shake it if you want. To do that. Nothing. You're not going to be able to. You can even try and unlock it. Robert was smart enough to get it locked, so you can't, uh, you can't open up. Oh, that's what's in the box. So anyway, take your best guess, send it out on Twitter. If nobody guesses it, what are we going to do? Closest to, uh, closest to? Oh, they will guess. They'll be clues throughout the day. Oh, that's right. We're giving out clues throughout the day. You'll, you'll get clues. So watch the Twitter account. Hashtag Cloud2012. Again, if you're trying to get onto internet today, username Cloud. Password 2012. So we're going to leave the uh, we're going to leave the box up here for you to look at all day if you like, and come up and take a look at it. So let's introduce our speaker for the morning, Doug Sleeter. Uh, Doug is the founder and president of the Sleeter Group. He has an in-depth knowledge into accounting software, business applications, and systems. He's one of the top 100 influencers in the accounting industry and uh, top 25 of thought leaders in the accounting industry. He's a contributing writer to the CPA Practice Advisor magazine. Please help me welcome Mr. Doug Sleeter. Thank you. Good morning. I think uh, most people actually made it back from last night. Very good to see. Of course, I was in my room at 8.30. And I can prove it. <laughs> All right, let me get this uh, all going. Uh, Hey, the slides work. Okay. Well, anyway, welcome. Uh, a little bit about what I'm going to talk about here. The, the title kind of says it all right there. What I'm uh, going to try to do for you is go back to 30,000 feet on the practice of accounting and the business processes that our clients do every day. Um, and I want you to think of, the, uh, of my presentation more in the general sense for a 
I'm not going to talk about too many specific products. Every now and then I'll talk about a, an example that I, that I uh, find uh, useful. But anyway, so let me get to this slide that starts this. So we're in the new world, all and the old world started about I don't know, 25 years ago uh, because it involves the personal computer. Uh, and the new world that we're seeing uh, evolving now, uh, I'll, I'll discuss, it has really been coming for about 10 of those years, but it's coming slowly. Uh, but I see some reflection points happening earlier in the Anyway, why don't we start with this old world and describe what it looks like. Uh, my, my graph here, you may have seen this, this slide before, but I think it's particularly useful to frame up what we're talking about. On the right here is the accounting office. Uh, so when you think about the accounting uh, my uh, clicker is turned off. Or it may be a battery, which could not possibly happen. It was working just five minutes ago. Uh, yeah, but uh, I'll just do it with the keyboard. Anyway, so on the right hand side there is uh, the accountant, and on the left hand side there is the client. They're, they're in their offices, and they communicate back and forth all the time. And this communication for all centuries has been, you know, bring me your stuff and I'll do you a tax return and uh, telephone communication, occasionally uh, driving back and forth to see each other. Uh, what's unique about uh, the old world is that both of us, the accountant's office and the client's office, have all these servers and lands and, and uh, software and hardware and IT support needs and all that stuff. Uh, the data, the data that you as the accounting professional use and give uh, to, to serve, so that's the debits and credits, and that's the reports, and that's the uh, anything about their, uh, their data. It all lives in the client's office on those desktop service lines. So Cloud9, the conference here, is all about moving that data to the cloud, yes. but. Um, before in this old world, we couldn't, we, we didn't really have any choices, and the accounting professional had to find a way to get to this old data, or to this live data, by either traveling over there to the office, or perhaps uh, remote desktop into the client's office. This is complex. This is uh, some of us figured out how to do it and have been doing it uh, for some time. That's all nice, but uh, in the end, this is quite an expensive and uh, complex way of working. Uh, some of us have figured out what we want the client to do is send us your data and we will then do our work and then we'll send you back your data. Uh, how many people are doing something along that line? Send me your QuickBooks file, I'll work on it, and I'll send you back your QuickBooks. So I saw about 20% uh, of the hands go up, and that was pretty much the only way to do it before, and that essentially is the problem that we're trying to eliminate. Because it's expensive, dangerous, security lapses everywhere. Uh, it is complex. It, it runs the risk of getting out of sync between who's got the data that's live and who doesn't, and those sorts of problems. So the old world was great compared to manual, because at least we were computerized uh, bookkeeping systems and all, with the QuickBooks or Peachtree or whichever software you were using. It was a real leap forward uh, from the ancient world, I guess. Uh, but uh, but in the the internet world. There's all these new needs. Uh, what this old world and the software that was prevalent in the old world, like QuickBooks, was never designed for even understanding that there was this thing called the internet. And what does the internet bring us? Well, the internet brings small business owners the need and uh, an opportunity to start selling online. So you get an e-commerce store, uh, and you've got this premise-based data set how do you get the data from this e-commerce store into the data set that's live? That becomes harder and harder and harder to really make work. And at the Sleater Group, that's one of the problems we've been trying to solve for for a long time, is how do we get e-commerce, just take that one little thing, and get it to connect into the accounting system. It's hard, it's unreliable, and uh, there's just too many people trying to address it poorly. So many of our clients who just went out and bought whatever system they found, uh, usually have uh, problem systems that, that uh, don't really give them the kind of uh, uh, 
of analysis they need on their on their business. Anyway, so that's the old world. Now the new world that we're seeing is uh, I just like this picture because it kind of shows that live data, that red piece. Now we're going to just put that data into the cloud. Now you're going to say, Doug, what cloud? Where? Where will it be? What servers? And what state? And in what country will it? So for now, if you'll just allow me to say, it doesn't matter. And of course, it does matter. But but from the architecture perspective, it doesn't matter exactly where the data is, other than it is in a cloud place that is accessible from the two offices. The clients on one side, the accounts on the other side. We're logging into the data via some sort of cloud connection. And um, the other key piece is the data is surrounded by some software in the cloud. And one of the benefits we get when we centralize the data is that both the account and the client can begin using the same version of the software on the live data file. So how many of you have 15 versions of QuickBooks installed on your own machines in your <laughs> office to support all the different versions your clients might have? And that's what we're addressing there. So it's, just, it's funny. It's that one subtle little thing there that buys us the ability to not have to install all the different versions on our local machines. The other, of course, important thing is security. Because uh, I said earlier, it doesn't matter where the, the data is. Of course it matters, and of course it matters from the security perspective, reliability perspective. So what you do in this cloud place is you surround the data and the software with security. And I'm talking both logical security or software security, like virus, um, firewalls, intrusion controls, all of the sort of the uh, IT security. And also physical security, so guys with guns and fingerprint readers in order to get in there on a 24-7 basis. So just pause for a minute and think about the security of your own office or any of your clients' offices. How secure, relative to a data center, is your office? It's just not. And um, so what I think is sort of ironic is that Many of the resistances that we get from clients and, and firms when we talk about move to the cloud, oh, not on my watch, that's dangerous, you know. And, it, and it's actually the opposite is more true, that they're, they're currently in a very dangerous data situation. Um, you know, uh, I carry this laptop and it's got a hard drive, and if I didn't know enough to encrypt it, uh, you know, you can take this laptop and then, you know, you got the hard drive, and that's everything that you need. And if my QuickBooks file is on there, then my customer list is on there, and their credit card numbers, and my banking connections are on there, and you can get right into my bank and initiate a payment or a thing. Wow, <laughs> that's not secure. Um, and I, I go to the bathroom, and one of you guys just come up and slip a, a, a USB drive into my machine here, and you got it, you know? So this is... Uh, uh, I, I think when we think security, I, I like to always be fair. Uh, compare your security with your current world, your old world, to the new world, and be fair and, and compare apples to apples. All right, so the other things about the new world that I think are compelling here it, are that um, it begins, it changes everything. The world allows us now to take back uh, from the accounting firm perspective, take control back of the general ledger. Uh, ever since QuickBooks came out, we love it, we hate it, whatever. But one of the things that I think we would all agree on is that it took control of the debits and credits out of the accounting firm and into the client's offices. Is that pretty true? And the bookkeepers are doing it. And that control switch the clients loved it. Oh, you don't need to know anything, just bring up a form and write a check. But you and I know very well that all that created was a big bunch of mess, right? So we've all, many of the Sleater Group members, who are, you know, there's 700 people out there, all making a living uh, serving small business owners with their QuickBooks files. What are they mostly doing? They're going in and they're cleaning up garbage all the time. So a whole industry has grown around this problem of the old world. Uh, a loss of control, loss of involvement from the accounting professional on what actually gets into the general, general ledger. 
Again, the cloud really is a, a way we can begin to mitigate those issues. I can't, I really don't uh, like to get so on the left side of my screen here, if you look at the, the, this is sort of like the list of duties now that my clients are going to be doing as opposed to the right side, which is what the accounting firm is going to do. So instead of the bookkeeping living in the clients, I could actually have bookkeeping living in the accounting professional's uh, list of, of, of duties and the job description. Um, now, some of you are saying, I don't want to do bookkeeping. Well, don't. But the point I'm saying is that now we can before we can't put it. The, the accounting firm can go much deeper in the consulting business. So you can now, because you have access to their data 24-7 from anywhere, I can't, you I can really actually know. get in and analyze the data, give them inspired advice about their business, as opposed to, well, okay, send me your data and I'll get back to you in a month. Backward-looking financial statements. So real-time consulting on, based on real-time data. Uh, payroll, taxes, those are services that the accounting firm has been doing all along. Uh, but it gets much easier and you can then spread out the jobs that are to do with the tax returns at the end of the year or even the uh, interim uh, tax, uh, say payroll tax or, or uh, sales tax returns. You can really spread them out as opposed, as opposed to waiting for uh, the final data to get to you. Um, over on the left side, I'm going to get to the bottom here, but uh, on the left side, the client's going back to, to work in their own business as opposed to doing bookkeeping. And I like this. This is how it ought to have always been. Uh, they go back to managing data. What is that, what I mean by that? Well, managing data to me means they manage, let's say, flows of information. Flows from the web store that took orders today come in, they show up, i got to pick, pack, ship, uh, order, purchase order, man maintain my inventory. They're managing the operations as opposed to focusing on debits and credits and uh, beep, 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 beep. I don't want them doing that. You know, I want them really thinking about managing the flow of information and doing their, their business. Um, Timesheets is something that I think will always live at the client because isn't that where all of the real raw information for job costing builds, uh, at least in a services business? It's how much uh, does each employee spend working on each different job or, or area. Of the so timesheets will still be very important to keep in the client's place uh, and actually to each of their employees. So it's not just the bookkeeper doing timesheets, but every employee. And hopefully that's in an online place and hopefully that's even in a mobile place. In other words, my phone should just know where I am and who I'm working on and should be timing me and sending my timesheet up uh, to, through the cloud to the general ledger. Again, I'm not, what I'm trying to get away from is somebody having to type in stuff all the time. So uh, job costing is also something that is about the business, that which projects or which uh, costs are going to be allocated by job. That's the point of it. Uh, point of sale is obviously always going to be in the uh, uh, in the uh, premise of the of the customer, the client. Uh, now, dashboard I put on both sides. Dashboards are really where I think it all comes to roost. If you could just imagine a world where the business owner goes in and uh, the way they work is right now most of us work by opening email and then getting in jail for two or three hours a day just to babysit our email, I would submit that that is my number one productivity sink is my email. I just hate it. I will do anything to, to somehow make me more productive because you can't take email away, but how do I get control of email? So, uh, but imagine a world where I got out of email and went to a dashboard, a sort of electronic real-time dashboard that's telling me, here's the number of orders that came in yesterday, here's how many people visited my web store that didn't even buy, here's how many people are inquiring about my new product that's coming out, here's how many uh, hours my employees were billable at yesterday or last week or whatever, um, and there's an upcoming meeting that we need to pay, prepare for or whatever, and you're going to need this so can't you imagine just all of this information that really is going to help this business owner manage the business as opposed to respond to somebody else's questions. And that's what I call dashboard. And dashboard can be, it is going to be different for every single client. 
every business has a different dashboard need uh, because their businesses are different. Even two dentists might have different dashboard needs. Maybe one dentist does orthodontia and needs to continually replenish the inventory of whatever it is they put in your mouth. <laughs> I don't know their business that well. But uh, my point is that even two uh, businesses in the same industry may have unique needs for their dashboard. And the reason I put the dashboard on the accountant side is that the, uh, this is one of the biggest opportunities for uh, new business services you could never have done before, but that are facilitated by this new world. You could be the guy who designs dashboards for all your clients. And let me just tell you that there's a lot of solutions in the dashboarding world that have come out. There's one in the, in the exhibit hall over here, Coralytics. Uh, and there are several uh, uh, tools like that. And what there aren't is people like you and me embracing them and going out and actually turning them into services. So that's a big opportunity that I would encourage you to uh, think about for your own business. Um, Obviously, the new world brings all these new benefits. Anytime, anywhere is probably the biggest one because that is the foundation of what everything else uh, it, it, uh, builds. Um, we get better security, and that's what I was saying earlier. Just be fair. I think this is even more secure than the other, than the old world. It's certainly simpler. At first, if we're all confused about exactly what it is, but actually, once we get over that hump, I think you're going to see it simpler. Then the server in the back room, all the desktops in the land, and which one, where am I, who am I, what am I. So anyway, that's the new world that I, I, I'm kind of reporting on to you and uh, tracking the progress of. There's another big trend going on called chunkification of the business process. So what I'm talking about here is um, it used to be that we you know, with the, new, with the old world coming in, there were these big behemoth applications built called QuickBooks and Peachtree and you know, Great Plains and Microsoft Dynamics. And there's a whole triangle full of, uh, of, of applications that go all the way up to the super high end. But in the small business where most of us live, it's been QuickBooks very dominant. But it's one big product, and it does AR and EP and payroll and, and job costing and classification and reporting, and it just does it all. So what I'm getting at with chunkification is that instead of one big product, we're now seeing a, a, an explosion of chunks of each of the business processes thriving. So if you think about the chunkification being the middle is a cloud-based place where your data is. And the general ledger is there. So that was that from that new world slide, that's that middle part. But now instead of everything living there in that same spot, we're going to have chunks. Chunks here is uh, document management. So for document management, now that we're going paperless, we have this new need. There's no more physical cabinets. So now there's software needs for how do I manage documents? How do I store them? How do I retrieve them? How do I make sure that. Uh, it's available to whoever needs it in the organization to look up, uh, uh, did we get a product or, uh, or service and did we pay the bill or uh, is that contract, uh, uh, you know, are we in compliance with that contract or whatever. So these paperless documents need to be stored and retrieved. That to me is a new chunk in the overall system that we need software companies to really think through and, and uh, uh, perfect for our clients. Another chunk would be uh, CRM, Customer Relationship Management. Uh, so Office Tool Pros is, is in the exhibit hall out there. That's a good example of somebody who's really taken the perspective of uh, the needs to track all the customers and our uh, uh, projects with those customers and all that. So another chunk that really isn't about the accounting system, but very much involved in the debits and credits at some point, right? So these are chunks. Another chunk would be uh, online bill paying and uh, invoicing. Again, the cloud has also brought in this whole concept of online banking. How many people use online banking for your personal bank? The reason why, because I want to, who, who does it? Maybe I should ask that one. Who does not? All right, so we all do. Wow, you're already in the cloud. <laughs> How many people are in, your in the cloud for your business? Would you, would you just say, I am at least somewhat in the cloud, I'm using some cloud-based software. How many say, I really don't, I'm all on that old world? 
one, two, three. Okay, so, and I know that this is a, you're on the road, you, you maybe have little steps you've taken, but, um, so online bill painting is one of those that I think we, is a surprise. We're already there. Everybody's already there. Uh, but we didn't think of it that way. We didn't think we were in the cloud. We're there for our personal, but are we there for our business? Maybe not. And uh, that's to me, that seems backwards. Why wouldn't business go there first if there's compelling reasons to be there? Uh, anyway, another chunk would be uh, payroll. Now, payroll has often been a chunk that was outsourced to ADP paychecks. Uh, but now more and more there's cloud solutions for those things. Uh, another one would be uh, banking and credit card fees. So just being able to reconcile the bank account by connecting to the online records at the bank, that's another chunk that is being really uh, uh, perfected. And then e-commerce, what I talked about before, that's another chunk that is uh, uh, a whole slew of solutions for and uh, we're, we're uh, uh, needing to do this in this new world uh, where we could not even imagine it, you know, 20 years ago. And then finally, anything vertical. If you think about, um, you know, I guess um, transportation management, there's probably a whole bunch of vertical applications for that, or property management, or any uh, vertical industry, they're going to have their own needs for vertical solutions. And I would call those chunks too. Uh, because they often use uh, QuickBooks or some sort of general ledger as the place they integrate with. Uh, and uh, in the vendor community, most of them are opting to not build the general ledger inside their product, but instead to connect it. So that's what I mean by chunkification of the business process. Uh, the thing about these chunks is they do have to connect their data into the general ledger, but they also have to connect with each other. So it's it's this uh, network, if you will, of applications talking to each other and talking to the general ledger. So e-commerce totally needs to talk to CRM. And that also needs to talk to general ledger. And uh, it may need to talk to purchasing and uh, supply chain. And so I haven't painted every possible chunk here. There's a lot of other chunks. I bet there would be 30 if I could think of all the little pieces that they might consider to be chunks. Uh, but they all have to talk to each other, and uh, that's why it, uh, it is compelling, again, to go back to the cloud, an internet place where all these chunks are living and talking to each other in real time, where uh, if somebody turns their computer off, it doesn't break the system. Because the internet is never off. As you were saying, Doug, it is too. Well, not really. Um, you know, your access to the internet may, may be off, and somebody's server may be off, but the internet really isn't off. It's just, it's almost like air. <laughs> it is out there. Um, and uh, so so this new world is already very much with us. Anyway, let me now go to the other trend that's really uh, uh, moving uh, forward uh, quickly, and that is this trend called zero entry. So if you think about how much time we're all spending with the BB, BB, BB in QuickBooks, um, and how much we have spent on hiring bookkeepers to perform those tasks. Did you please do AR and you do AD and so forth? Um, we're spending, small businesses are spending on this process of entering data. Well, zero data is, is really what the new world also facilitates. So you got a buyer on the left and a seller on the right here. Uh, the buyer in this new zero entry model goes, this is the buyer, the actual end customer goes to shop. And they might be shopping at a physical location or more and more to an e-commerce location where they're entering their, their order into the system, which used to be the bookkeeper's job, right, at the, at the sellers. But the buyer is now doing their data entry for them, and it's their name, address, city, state. They're not going to zip. They're not going to get that wrong. Uh, they're going to enter which product they want. The sales tax populates in the software. All of this stuff is being entered for us. Uh, and so there is one point of data entry, and that's often, at the beginning anyway, uh, that is the customer doing it. Wow, that's cool. So the seller benefits because then they just get the data, uh, uh, the, the, the transaction, if you will. It's already populated. Now the seller often needs to babysit that transaction, like go to the right account or do something to adjust the order. But they didn't have to start by entering a new customer. 
you see where that dramatic in improvement in, in efficiency right there. And then the seller's transaction then travels electronically through the system uh, to the pick, pack, and ship, which then becomes a transaction, if you will, that sends uh, a like an invoice over to the seller or buyer. Um, who probably needs to look at that, maybe code that to a job cost or whatever. So there's a yellow piece there that is a little bit of uh, uh, data entry, um, but, but not much. It's not really entering, but actually just adding some context to the data. And then at the, uh, after they do that, then they schedule it to be paid, which uh, it initiates an electronic uh, payment transfer between banks, we hope, instead of enter bill, pay bill, write check, print check, and mail. That's all, all old. We can totally do ACH or PayPal or whatever to get these uh, payments made now. Again, no entry, no data entry for that. Uh, just a, a usually just a click of the mouse and maybe a date uh, on when we want to process it. At the end of that, the seller then just sees money showed up in the bank, and then the seller has to uh, the bookkeeper at the seller's last piece is to reconcile that everything worked. Uh, so do you see the, the yellow pieces on this graph? There are three yellow spots, and almost all of the real data entry in this one little transaction happened by the customer. Wow. And just go to the old world and just say how many times, so it used to be the customer didn't enter it, the seller did, uh, the bookkeeper entered the invoice or the sales receipt, and then there's probably some sort of shipper that was typed in by the shipping department. And then that was sent as a, a paper bill that was sent over to the buyer, who then entered beep, enter bill, and then uh, pay bill, right? So all the yellow from, from like 14 steps of data entry down to about three. Uh, and that to me is um, that changes everything. It really changes everything in the way um, our um, our businesses will operate, and our, and it gives rise to all these new opportunities for uh, both the bookkeeper. So if you think of the bookkeeping person, the, the one we hire and pay to sit there and enter bill, pay bill. Okay, oh, oh we're gonna we're gonna replace. No, no, no. They already were a very replaceable uh, cog in the overall wheel of the business. Well, what I want them to do is I'm definitely going to change the skill sets that we're requiring from them, but I want to make them from replaceable to uh, indispensable parts of this whole thing, upping them uh, to the process, to the uh, job of doing the reconciliation of the process, making sure that data is connecting, data is connecting to all the different places. So a very different skill set, um, but not a whole lot of data entry. And the other thing is what happens to the accounting? professional. Well, uh, the accounting professional has a whole new opportunity to install, configure, connect, test, monitor these systems for each of our clients. That's a very, it's almost IT-like. Uh, and, uh, and many of us maybe don't have the skills, and so that's kind of what I'm saying is, hey, we got to all go back to school. That's a whole new world that we're going to have to uh, know about and, and be able to be uh, uh, skilled in to help our clients. So evangelize and sell these new ideas. Uh, your job really is now a change management catalyst. Um, I actually don't like the term change management. I think it doesn't work. Change management? I'm going to manage you and I'm going to change you. I don't know many people that respond to that, even if they're an employee. I need to lead change, not manage change. Leading change is talking about why and, and getting everybody to buy, to buy into the change. And the other big thing that this brings up is, or, or I guess I gave a name to all this for the accountant and consultant, is to become a Lego master. You're the one who can evaluate all the different systems and put them together and build a new system out of all these chunks. So I think that's the big opportunity that we'll have. So, all right, so that let me just talk a little bit more this, about this uh, uh, changing and, and can we do it and how do we do it and because I think everybody kind of gets it I know I need to I know I should it's kind of like losing weight but where do I start um, and which clients would I move and so I would just make a few recommendations to you first of all I would uh, like to uh, just 
Does this bring up, uh, let's say, when, when we think about the client and, and we take the position of the accountant and the client, who leads who? I first want to challenge you to ask yourself, do I serve my clients or do I lead them? You know, and, and that's a fundamental point of view or a formal, fundamental way of thinking of who you are. Um, so if you say to, to your clients, well, I'll, I'll do anything you need from me. You just call me and I'll do it. Well, you know what? You're not going to get the call. Um, but if you go to your clients and say, well, look, um, I, um, you know, these are my skills. These are what I do for a living. And uh, I am invested in your success. And let me talk to you about Bill.com because I think this is going to make a dramatic improvement in your overall efficiency at, at your firm. So that's leadership. Uh, that's pushing the client sometimes when you don't feel comfortable as a salesman, and I get that. I'm not even. In fact, as soon as I feel myself selling, I just feel dirty. And I think that's the accountant in me, you know. But, but, but as soon as I feel like I'm educating, then I think the clients say, oh, yeah, that's, that's a new way of looking at it. So I guess um, if you can kind of appeal to people on the, uh, they make a change when they start to realize that other people like them are making that change. Then they say, ah, this is for me, as opposed to some theoretical thing that they don't understand. And so that's our job, is to really kind of tee, tee these things up. So where do we start? First, let me sh show this uh, adoption curve. Uh, if you haven't seen this, how many people have seen this technology adoption curve? people. Uh, this is uh, by Jeffrey Moore, uh, a book called Crossing the Chasm, uh, developed uh, 20, 30 years ago. And uh, uh, Dr. Jeffrey Moore did this. He's a Stanford, uh, I think Stanford professor. Uh, but uh, let me just talk about what the graph represents. So from the left to the right, you have time. And from the low to the high, you have number of customers adopting a particular technology. So this is, let's say this is uh, the iPhone. And on the left there represents the day that the innovators, the Steve Jobs, had the idea, I'm going to put a phone in their pocket and it's going to have applications, blah, blah, blah. So the innovators start in, in day one. And they go and they create the product. And then these, these early adopters, and nobody has noticed in the innovation stage, Nobody's adopting it, meaning nobody's buying it. They're looking at it, maybe, but nobody's buying it. And then when it gets released, a few people start buying it, and they, those are called the early adopters. And then later on the, in the scale, you can see more and more people adopt. We call them um, early majority, late majority, and finally laggards. And if you look at any technology in all of human history, this, is, this curve holds true. The difference with each technology is how uh, what the frequency is, that is the length from, of time from the far left to the far right, and the amplitude, the how many people actually buy it. Uh, the top of that curve, how many does that, does that represent? 100,000 people or 100 million people? Um, so I like to think of this because what happens and why it's relevant to what we're doing as accounting professionals is. Uh, right now, I think we're in this chasm spot, which is this place where a lot of innovation is happening. A lot of early adoption is happening. You and I might be those early adopters. I hope you are, because that's where people make most money in any technology site. Ones who adopt early and evangelize, and then maybe even become sellers <laughs> when things start to, start to grow. But this chasm happens because the early, early adopters have, have looked at the products and discovered bugs, discovered, hey, it's not quite right. And so we're the ones that beat up the vendors. We're the ones that are out there saying, no, 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 you, you, you don't understand this marketplace. So we know accounting. We know small business. We know uh, supply chain management. We know EDI. We know, we know how things work. And the innovators often don't quite know as much as uh, their problem set that is that we are is that we do. Um, and so that's what I'm saying. We focus on helping the integrators get it right. And as soon as then we start saying and communicating and teaching the early majority, then they'll jump in. Because they're listening to us. So did you, how many people came to Randy Johnston's thing yesterday? 
Everybody listens to Randy. What do we listen about? What's the next laptop I'm going to buy? What's the next phone? What's the tablet? What's I mean, some of you are saying, well, geez, why do I need to know about the Intel chips? Well, it's funny because I don't know, but I'm just so glad he's got my back. You know, so he's that early adopter guy who knows it all, who teaches it to us, and as long as Randy says go, we're going because we trust him. And that's the other big deal, is you and I, as the accounting professional, we are the most trusted advisor. So we're in such a perfect position to drive innovation, or drive uh, adoption of these, of these innovations. So uh, I think we're still very much in this chasm place. I think it's our job to really invest in tool up our own knowledge so that we can make the, the case for our, for our clients. And I would also submit that if we don't, somebody else will. There's some sort of momentum or uh, unstoppable almost gravity, if you will, of what's going on with this, this internet explosion and these trends I'm talking about, zero entry and, and simplification. You can argue with me, but look, fine. But I'm saying it's happening whether we want it or don't. The cloud's happening whether we want it or don't. It's there. If you wanted to opt out of the cloud, what would you do? Think about that. Just just pause on I don't like the cloud. 15 reasons I don't like it. I'm going to just opt out. What would you do? Never have a job. Don't get a social security card. Don't get a bank account. Don't buy a house. Don't invest in anything. Uh, basically, go to sleep. Don't drive a car. Every single one of those things I just said has your, info, your information in the cloud because you do that. So we're already there. So. All right, so on this uh, change leading uh, thing, let me just give you the four quick uh, steps to lead change. Um, this was also developed by a, a professor at Harvard Business School. It's actually eight steps that I condensed into four, and this is uh, uh, just sort of how to break down the process of leading clients to change. So the first thing is, oh, let me just say before I get there, leading clients, but also your own firm, because many of you have the first job is to get your firm on board. And so in any organizational unit, there are leaders and there are followers and there are the people in between that can help us go. So first we've got to set the stage, plan and communicate, implement and follow through. So let's talk about setting the stage. The, you have to create this motivation and urgency around the problem. So whatever the problem is, we have to find ways to open up the discussion with the whole staff. Everybody has to become involved and understand that there are threats to our business if we don't look at this, uh, whatever chain we're, we're looking at. So the threat with regard to this chunkification and cloud, cloudy world that we're going in, this new world, is if we don't do these things uh, as a firm and if our clients don't do them as, as, as a, a business, then the competitive space we all live in, the competitors will. The newer people are there in the cloud, right? So, uh, meaning the younger uh, crowd. They're in the cloud. They're digital natives. The cloud thing to them is just second nature. So if we're trying to uh, uh, create some motivation around it, it's like, look, we don't really have a choice. It's like that gravity thing I said. Uh, the next thing is uh, leadership team. You've got to get people involved enough to become leaders in the vision. So you can't have command and control for this kind of change. You need to have buy-in and opt-in and, and leaders to lead pieces of the, of the transition. The next thing is a, a clear vision. So what is it going to look like when we're done? Uh, and how do we communicate that to everybody so that, that they can see how their job will change when we reach our vision? And uh, many of the, this is one of the places where you're going to re reach a lot of resistance. Oh, I don't want to go paperless because I have my file drawer and it's got five years of every vendor's invoice in there. And what am I going to do if I don't put it in there and I scan it and throw it away and shred it and put it in the cloud? And, and how, oh, we're going to get resist, resist, resist. And uh, I got this in my company. We're still about. I would say we're 90% paperless now, 
in the sense of storage of data, storage of records, there's still some things that we store on paper. Um, and at home, I guess there are a few things too, like anything that has a notary stamp, the uh, stamping or uh, original signature contracts, I still feel like I'm going to keep the paper. I can't quite let myself let that go. And who knows when I, I will. But uh, you, you're going to get resistance in a lot of areas, and you need to just continue to discuss and let people be resistant until they start to experience the change. Um, the next thing is uh, obstacles. So obstacles could be all sorts of different things. Um, uh, you know, an obstacle might be, well, we have an urgent matter. We have a particular project that has to be done. I don't have the extra hour a day to, to go and convert to paperless or do something different. So you've got these obstacles of the business is running, and I can't just stop the world and make these changes. Uh, so that's where I like to break things down. Let's do little things instead of everything at once. So there isn't a right way to move to the cloud. There isn't a, uh, all at once. Uh, in fact, there was a panel yesterday where they were trying to argue that, that is it everything or nothing or, or everything or some things to the cloud. And it was kind of fun how they did that. Um, but I, I, I'm a real proponent of just get started and do something and then start realizing the benefits of that. And that's where I go to this fourth thing, which is measure a cost before you make this change. So um, I've been speaking a lot about Bill.com and the kid in my thing yesterday. Um, for us, we, we started looking at what does it cost us to process one vendor invoice. And it was something like $28, $38 per invoice. When you added the, the cost of the people, the paper, the postage, the um, uh, the process of, uh, of time that each of the people in the company would spend to uh, review the invoices before they got paid. So we measure. The point is measure whatever your costs are that are important to your business before you get started. Then measure after. I would actually say measure during and after. So have we made any progress or is it worse? I would bet you that many of the changes you begin to implement, and if you measure in the middle, I, 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 when you just begin, you might get really scared and say, you know what, it's more expensive or slower, and you've got to just hang in because you've got, uh, you know, often maybe you're paralleling two systems, so it's actually twice as much work at first. Um, it's like losing weight, I guess. You know, oh, gosh, it's so hard. It actually gets better as you start to lose your hunger or whatever. Uh, so. You know, you don't get something for nothing is kind of what uh, what, what I would say here. Um, let's see. Let's go to this uh, next one. So let me just kind of summarize by some of the things I've, I've uh, said here. I would just say there's an old world who are uh, developing. Uh, the pace of change is faster than I've ever seen in my lifetime. Uh, and uh, I think you're probably seeing that too. That's probably why you're here. You're saying, cloud, what the heck is that? Um, and you know that bothers a lot of people. In fact, I still get all the time. What do they mean when they say cloud? It's we just throw around these terms, and nobody really knows what that means. Uh, and uh, you know that I found that in technology overall is that speed of change is so fast that we don't even have time to all really even understand the words we're using. Uh, Randy put up some slides yesterday. I even forget what the new acronym, acronym was, but it was like E-U-L-I or something. And I, I had no idea what it was. And he just runs through it like everybody knows what he's talking about. What's that? So I guess uh, the speed of change is happening fast. The terminology is going So for you and I, it's all about this continually relearning, relearning stuff. That you should be saving an hour a day just to to uh, continue to up your own uh, skills and, and understanding of these things. Chunkification, zero entry, I think it is happening, whether or not we like it. Uh, and it presents such incredible, not only efficiencies, but opportunities for you and me. Um, and change leadership is really where I want to go. Um, I, I guess my, my bills were in the opposite order here, but the, the bookkeeper's role and the accountant's role are the two really big changes that is where it really hits you and me. And I just want to encourage you to think about that, plan for that, make your own business plan around that, uh, and uh, 
thrive in this new world, lead, new, lead your clients into, the, into the, the new world. So that's what I have. Thank you, and we'll see you throughout the rest of the day. Thank you. If there are questions, I can put them. Um, we are going to let you, Doug will be up here at front uh, for any questions or anything like that. Uh, we are going to go now from uh, here to a break. The rooms are available with the, uh, the stuff. Robert uh, has his new product available now to go take a look at and see in the, in the area just across the hallway. And then we have two breakout sessions, one at 10, one at 11. Uh, look at your schedule for those. Noon is lunch, and then back here at 1 o'clock for our afternoon keynote. Okay, so, yeah. Again, if you'd like to uh, have any other questions, come on up. I will be up here to answer your questions. Take care. Have a great day. You did well. Okay. No. Can you hear us? It's not. Yeah. That's not Doug. <laughs> it's a big smiley face. Well, he was in front of there for a second. I think he walked aside to answer a question. So, uh, to get list, obviously, scanners for scanners. I, I actually got to sign off because I got to go uh, uh, talk to a client. Fujitsu uh, scanners. Okay. Thanks, guys. Next week, we'll have partly on next week for sure to do wave accounting. All right. Thanks, Seth. I have a